Right, we're here again. Uh -huh. yes, we, can, we can start, yes. Yes, we can, because it's a new day. Sunny and brighter here in UK. And I want to believe the same thing happens to everywhere. We are all enjoying Monday afternoon, Monday evening, or Monday morning. You are all welcome to this wonderful section again with Dr. Elizabeth Lucas. I want to say thank you again for joining me today. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your willingness to want to listen and learn. And also we appreciate any comments that you put on the chat box on the Facebook. Thank you once again. Now I don't want to waste any of your time and I just want to go straight. I believe some of you joined us yesterday when we were talking about gratitude for positivity. Because when you are building a relationship, you need to be ready to show gratitude, to thank your spouse, your friends, your boss, your leaders, your managers, your coworkers, because in one way or the other, they have contributed to your growing, your development, and your succeeding or your success. So never be too harsh or in ease to say thank you. Always appreciate, even if it is just a cup of water that somebody gave you, they still deserve to be appreciative and also to say thank you to them. So that is all what we did yesterday. And you can only show gratitude when you think and when you can stay positive. If all what you have in your mindset is negative, you, will be, you won't have that ability to appreciate others and to thank them for what they have done. So that is what we shared yesterday. Today is another topic in building a healthy and deeper relationship. And we're still on mindset for transformation in relationship. So today, permit me to share my slides. You are all welcome. Stay relaxed and let's enjoy this section together. So we are talking about mindset for transforming relationship. And yesterday we did about gratitude to positivity. And today again, guess what we are going to be sharing? Forgiveness for freedom. I want to believe every one of us wants to be free or experience freedom in our lives. Why did I say positive uh, forgiveness to freedom? Because of forgiveness, we only hold you back and limit you and have you to be bitter. And also you try to avoid some things that, you, that can help you in your progress. Before I move on, I believe you already know who is speaking to you. I'm Professor Dr. Elizabeth Lucas of Falalu, the founder and director of Yes, You Can International, United Kingdom, and also the founder of YYCI Academy, YYCI Transformational Leadership, and also Elizabeth Creations and Talkments Limited. I'm an award-winning author of a book called Yes, You Can, Global Inspirational Speaker, Youth Mentor, Global Advisor. And on top of it, I've been honored in various ways, like professor, doctorate, counselor, mentor, and advisor. So these are all the books written by me and my co-fellow, even one of them, is for my husband and also for member of YYCI. So if you need any of this book, visit 
www.amazon.co.uk or www.amazon.com. And also if you want to know more about Yes You Can, it's yesyoucaninternational.com or yesyoucanbyelizabeth.com. You are all welcome at any time to share and also to learn with us. But before I move any further, let me give honor to whom honor is due, because this great platform is founded by our great leader, Sir Piyush Pandit, the founder of International Intensive University. Intensive Inter International Intensive University, IIU, is a leading virtual education system, global brand confederation, which is the most valuable and trusted worldwide and well reputed in delivering innovative programs, which I myself have been enjoying for the past two to three years and it's globally. It is a trusted name for quality training programs and is committed to providing better and virtual education to all the young learners, including me, because I'm still young, of the globe. So in a short span of time, Hi IU has spread its wings in 195 countries and six continents under the strong leadership of its visionary founder, Sir Piyush Pandi, a committed and inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist from the last two decades, providing education to students from various social and cultural background, which I, I am also a beneficiary of these programs. So I want to say thank you, sir. I also want to appreciate Professor Nada, Dr. Emina, Dr. Singa, and Dr. Inga for always, always, working hard behind the scene as the team of IIU. Professor Nada is also the co-founder of IIU. And Dr. Inga is the Europe IIU AIDS. But there's also another person I need to mention his name. It's my mentor, my leader. It is senior Professor Charles. Ebora is the vice chancellor of IIU. And also, because I'm from Africa, he's also the African IIU continental head. So we know we are all together. And I do not take anything for granted for giving me opportunity to share my inspirational nuggets of wisdom on this prestige platform. So thank you so much once again. Okay, so like I've said before, our program or our topic for today is on mindset for transformation on relationship. And to break it down, we are talking about one particular, very important sensitive topic forgiveness for freedom. When you forgive, then you have your freedom. When you forgive, then you are free and you can live a happy life. Let me also let you know that there is a book already written by me titled, The Love We Lost. How do we reconnect and rebuild relationship? You can get this book as well on amazon.com. The reason why I'm introducing this book is because majority of what I'll be sharing today is actually from this book. It's about how you can forgive 
and reconnect your trust, how you can build your trust again, how you can reconnect, how you can love again, and how you can start all over again and enjoy your life. However, there are four things that are missing in love and relationship. Number one is ignorance. There are so many things that we are ignorant about that we don't know. And if you don't know, you don't know. And what you don't know, you suffer the consequences. Then we have the lack of understanding, lack of vision. And then finally, unknown of our identity of who we are and our purpose. So that is why you can see so many problems arising. But can we overcome all this? Can we get the better understanding? Can we have a vision? Can we have our identity and know who we are and our purpose? Of course we can. And yes, we can. So let's move on to the moment of the truth. Are you still there? To listen and to learn from this truth. So we are talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness is freedom. Forgiveness is divine. You can't make it. You can't walk it. You just have to believe God to help you to go through the process so that you can forgive and move on and let go of the past. Forgiveness is a command. Like the scripture says, we forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's a command from God in the Bible. And I believe it's also the right thing to do if you want to release yourself. Forgiveness shows we are not perfect. On the chat box, I would like you to just click something. If you are perfect, say yes. If you know that you are not perfect, yes, then say no. But so in my own journeys of life, I have never seen anybody being perfect. So we are not perfect. And we are also human beings. So forgiveness is the only way to show that we are really not perfect. Forgiveness is a cure to bitterness. Forgiveness is happiness and peace of mind. So the question is, are you ready to forgive? And do you want to know how you can forgive? So let's take a moment to read, to know about the truth. Some that can never forgive is someone destined to be alone. Forgiveness is one of the ways you can profoundly change your life and start all over again. It's not always easy, but it is a skill that can be learned. It's just take practice and it's a matter of time. Forgiving and forgetting is a skill that requires to work to become good at it. It's not overnight skills to learn. It is not like a microwave to put your food in and over. Within a minute, it's all finished. No, because there's so much trust that has been damaged. There's the wounds, emotionally wounds that has been hurt. But be smart. If someone took advantage of you at work, it doesn't mean you shouldn't be careful to prevent it from happening again. So that means if you forgive, you also need to be prepared to prevent 
any other things like that to happen. That moment, that incident, that situation to happen again. So that is why I say forgiveness is a process. Forgiveness means that you should let it go so you don't have to be miserable thinking about that person every day for the next five years. Negative emotions are tools that can tell us that something might be wrong for your best result. So take the appropriate action. That is why we are here to help you because it's not easy to forgive. Take it at a time. Something happens and then be done with the emotions. Forgive and move on with your life. But I will tell you, it is not easy. You will need help. And we are here to support you. We are still on moment of the truth. The only way to live happily, peacefully, and harmony with one another in this world is for everyone to admit it, that we are all different. We come from a different background and we are all not perfect. We are all can make mistakes and we are all have the ability to choose our tradition, our religion, our beliefs, our faith, a way to serve God, our culture, and still respect one another. The moment you understand this truth, the moment you are ready and prepare yourself to forgive. We all have the ability to choose better understanding, bring peace, unity, and love. And that is why we are here to enlighten you more, to help you, to guide you, to give you a better understanding, to channel your, your mindset, and also to let you see beyond the situation you are facing. But let me say this, without love, it might be very difficult to move on. And we have so many kinds of, different kinds of love, but I'm just gonna share with you quickly the very best love that can help you to build yourself up and to be willing to forget and let go. Agape or selfless love. It is the selfless unconditional love. It is spiritual love, a boundless compassion love that is without desires and expectations, regardless of the flaws and shortcomings of others. Love heals, love protects, love connects, love forgives, and believe for our greater good. So the love can be classified as intuition, divine truth, and love can accept, you can accept one another in respect of our flaws, in respect of our differences, in respect of what people do to us or what we do to others. And that is why it is so important that we go through this section. I have a question for you. Remember, we are talking about relationship, building relationship. Remember, we are talking about the mindset. And then you are restoring your mind with the positive or the negative information. But let me quickly draw you. Can you just think twice? Did someone break your heart? Because it's so easy. Some of you might be in that process at the moment. Some of you might be so hurt at the moment. So maybe recent events. Did someone break your heart? Did someone betray, bully, cheat, or humiliate you? Sometimes when they do all these things to you, 
you feel like, oh my God, I wish I'm not here. You are very, very emotionally broke down. We all experience it because we are whole human beings. And we are also building relationships every day of our lives. We connect with our colleagues, our families, our friends, our spouse. And all these things I'm asking, I believe some of you have experienced it before, including me that I'm speaking. Let me ask those questions again. Did somebody break your heart? Did someone betray, bully, cheat, humiliate you? Do you want to learn how to forgive? It's not going to be easy, but a step at a time can make you progress and move forward and let go. So do you want to communicate and love again? Build the trust that has been broken and restore your relationship. If all the answers to these questions is yes, then you are on the right platform. So let me move on. Everyone has suffered some sorts of emotional hurt through the words being said to you or actions of others. In our journeys of life, you will meet so many people. And have you noticed as well that even we as well, we can be in the position of hurting others. Maybe what we said to them or maybe what we have done to them. So it's no exception of anybody. And it is not intentional sometimes. It could be the situation, the other spouse or the other person was, or it could be the situation where we were that lead us to do what we're doing. Expressing these thoughts is completely natural, but sometimes the hurts last longer that it needs to. Sometimes it could take one year. It could take many years to be healed from this. But when we learn some principles, it will help us to fasten our belt and then to quicken the process. This makes it harder to be happy because if you have somebody grudges against somebody, there's no way you want to live happy life. Once you hear their names, once you see them or meet them somewhere, your heart is pumping. You are furious. You feel like not being there. You are so upset and bitter. So this can be harder to be happy if you are not forgiven. If we can't let go and move on, it can ruin relationships. Even the new relationships we are building, let me put it this way. For example, if A hurts you badly and you didn't forgive that person, remember by the time you build a new relationship with B, you will still going to carry on what has happened to you or carry on what your feelings was or is to the other person that has hurt you before. But when you let go, then you enter into new relationship with a new life. It also can, for husband and wife, that unforgiveness spirit can also affect your children, the new generation. So you can see it can affect everyone around you because your actions will speak even louder than voice. So someone that can never forgive is someone destined to be alone. And I want you to know 
And I know that none of you want to be left alone. It's a journey. You didn't come to this world to be alone. You cannot do anything without others. Your customers, your managers, your co-workers, your neighbors, your friends, your families, your relatives. You will always meet somebody somewhere. In every challenge of life, there's always storms and there are ways to come out of these storms. That is why I appreciate this platform of IIU, where they are giving us the chance to come and think, to come and learn, and to come and take actions for a better for tomorrow and also for happiness. However, there are always movement. However, storms force you to change and become better, stronger, wiser. So in anything, any situation or challenges that you are facing, be done by others or contributed to by others, when you learn to forgive and move on, and live a happier and better life, you become stronger, wiser, and also happier in life. So let's move on. People have got used to hiding from their emotions and to letting them govern their lives uncontrollable, which leads to many unresolved conflicts inner and with others to sending mixed messages to the people around them, to numerously lingering issues waiting to be resolved while really happy. Because of this unforgiveness, the person who is in touch with their emotions, who knows how to control and understand them, who is able to discharge themselves from their feelings is often viewed as stable professionals and reliable partners in business or even in private life. So when you know these principles and you follow these skills and learn it, it will help you in your own private life and also help you in your professions. And they really are because they don't allow emotions to rule their lives. If you have this unforgiveness spirit, you are allowing the emotions to rule your lives. But if you stand out and say, yes, I am going to go through this and forgive and move on and let go, you will see a better result because you will be happy, healthy, and also be able to help others or impact into other people's life. From my past and present experience, I became strong to know that forgiving someone does not mean it didn't happen. Get that from me. When you're about to forgive, always have it in mind that it has happened and you cannot deny that. But there's a way that you can transfer your message to the other fellow to let them know that this is not right. And if they are adamant to listen, forgiveness, when you forgive others, you are helping yourself to release yourself and be free. So, forgiveness doesn't necessarily resume trust. It's not magic and it is not overnight. You just have to go through the process. It's just the beginning of building all over again, the trust. It's not overnight, but it's ongoing. When you are working on forgiveness, just do your part towards reconciliation. 
I know through experience again, when we choose to forgive and allow that to work within our own heart individually, cutting off every place where anger, hunter, haunt, and bitterness and fear thoughts of self-pity or self-righteousness rise up, then the event becomes nothing but a memory. Oh, yes. When we rise up and build ourselves up and learn these skills, and practice it and ready at all costs to forgive and let go. Then you will see some changes. Then you will see it as it's just a past. Then you will see it as a memory. It's not easy, but it is possible. We find ourselves free of all emotional attachment to it. We even forget it. Yes, people will say forgive and forget, but it's not easy. But when you start the process, you will be seeing yourself letting go because the memory will start waving away. We find ourselves free. We even forget it. We are able to bless those who have even injured us. That's another level. Like I said to you, you just have to start from somewhere. By the time you realize it, you are growing. You are growing. And even the person that hurts you, you are even be willing to help them. Because like I said, right from the beginning, when people hurt us, sometimes it is not intentional. Sometimes they, don't, they themselves, they don't know. And even if they know, they too are going through some trauma and they don't know how to control their emotions. But if you help yourself and you went through the process and you were able to forgive them, believe me, you will be their mentors because you'll be able to help them as well to come out of it and to let go of the past. It is very important that we all understand this and are even willing to return to the relationship. I've seen some people, they separated for many years, but they still come back because they've learned from their mistakes, from their flaws, from their evil ways. They've learned, they've sought for help and support, and they've helped themselves. And they now come back to talk about it. They will even laugh about it, of what has, has happened in the past. And believe it or not, they can even come back to build the trust and also to build their love and their relationship. And also, again, to build again what God intended for them right from the beginning. I've seen some divorce. Because divorce sometimes is just a paper that you signed. I've seen them tearing the paper after many years of reconciliation, coming back together and starting afresh and living together happier than before. That is what forgiveness, that is what forgiveness we do. That is the benefits of forgiving one another. Some of your healing and miracle requires your forgiveness to yourself and to others. You have to let go. Let them go. Release them to release yourself. Remember my title is Forgiveness to Freedom. We all deserve to be free. We all deserve to free ourselves, to experience the freedom, the liberty. You can only do it when you don't hold people in your heart. You can only do it when you let go of the past events. You can only do it when you gain better understanding of yourself, of the situation, and of the other person. Forgiveness. Let you turn you back 
to bitterness. Bitterness is a big health issue because when you are bitter, then you are hurting yourself and you will continue until you develop all kinds of disease. And what will happen then? Then you are killing yourself, destroying yourself, being unhappy. This is all the things that will affect you if you decide not to forgive. If you have a regret about something you've done yourself, use this moment to forgive yourself. In my own life, it took me many years to forgive myself. And does that work? No. It even limited me and held me back and reduced me because I couldn't forgive myself. It also limited me. And I even put myself down because of unforgiveness. But when you now learn to break free, break loose, and step out of that event, you will see how free and happy you will be. If you have a resentment against someone else, use this time to forgive them. Things don't go as planned. If I can ask anybody on this platform today, have you planned some, something maybe about five years ago and you've accomplished all? I'm sure some of you would be honest with me to say no. If I say you set some goals 10 years ago, 10, and you said probably 10, 10 goals, and then you said this one I want to achieve 10 years time. If I ask you a question, have you been able to achieve those 10 goals? If you are honest to yourself, you will tell me, no, I have not. That is the situation. That is where I want you to see it. That is where I want you to, to look at it and let your mindset be clear with that. That things we planned doesn't go the way we needed it. Because we are in a world of uncertainty. You only know of today. You only know what you have experienced yesterday, but you don't know of tomorrow. And that is why we need to start developing the skills and be willing to forgive and let go. Learn to forgive and forgive quickly so that it doesn't hold you back, so that it doesn't limit you, so that it doesn't destroy you, so that it doesn't affect your happiness, so that it doesn't affect you wrongly, so that you can have a new, new life, new ideas, new visions. Because if you decide to hold on to it, you will be miserable for the rest of your life. So learn forgive and forgive quickly. It will reflect your emotions and gives you peace, joy, and be successful. If you don't forgive, it will affect your performance, either in your circle, even in your business, even in your working place. I, dis, I, dis, I disagree people saying that if somebody hurts me, the only way to retaliate is for me to be focusing on something else in order to oppress them. I disagree because you are still working under the influence of unforgiveness. Why don't you let yourself go and free yourself? So I've been talking for the past few minutes, giving you the reality of life sharing the moment of truth about this unforgiveness. Now the questions that you will be pondering in your heart, I've heard, yes. How then can I forgive? How can I let go and move forward with greater happiness? 
I will share some of my inspirational nuggets of wisdom. But it might not be enough. But just take it. Ponder on it. Study it. Research more. Read books. Because this is just a summary of what you should know that will help you to let go and free yourself by forgiving yourself and forgiving one another. So let me start with one, with these points. I've got only a few points here. The first one is think about all the advantages of letting go of your hurts. It's about you. It's not about them. It's about you building yourself up, freeing yourself, gaining your freedom, and live a happy life. So start thinking about the advantages of letting go of your hurts. Yes, yeah, they've hurt you. Yes, they've damaged you. Yes, they've betrayed you. Yes, they've done one thing or the other, serious. But it's about you now. Gain your life. Get your life back and enjoy your life. Make a list of what you will gain by forgiving what has happened to you. I'm still on one point. Think about all the advantages of letting go. So make a list of what you will gain by forgiving what has happened to you. Like me, like I've been saying, I'll be happy. I will be free of mind, peace of mind. I will enjoy my life. There's so many. So make a list of the advantages. Think about how free you will feel when you forgive that person and moved on and let go. How will your relationship with that person change? Think about it. Because yes, you are helping yourself. Because, and then when you now make yourself happy, it will reflect everything, everyone around you. Maybe you will even be the solution to the problem of that person that hurts you. So the question is, how will your relationship with that person change if you decide to forgive them? If you decide to let go? If you decide to build yourself up and rise above whatever they've done to you. The second list. List the advantages of maintaining your negative feelings. What will it do for you? Remember, it's different from the first one. The first one is advantages of letting go. The second question is, List all the disadvantages of maintaining your negative feelings about it. Negative feelings of, I will never forgive this person. I will not let go. All right, you said it to yourself. But now I want you to list the advantages of maintaining that negative feelings. So what toll is it taking on you and the people around you? How will it affect, reflect, influence everyone around you, including your own children? If you decide to maintain the negative feelings about that person, how will they feel? How will you feel? How does it affect your children? You know, I just mentioned it. How does it affect your own children? If you can't forgive your wife, your husband, your parents, your siblings, or whoever. How does it? So start thinking about the negative side of this and write it down. Now the question is, is it going to solve anything by continuing down the path you are currently on? If you decide to still be adamant about it, and hold on to say, I will never forgive that person. I will never forget what he has done for me. I will even hold him back or retaliate or rebel. Is it going to solve any problem? 
when you hold them to your heart. Because you can't tell me you owe them to your heart and you are blessing them. I'm sure you'll be praying that kind of funny prayer. You'll be waiting for their downfall. You'll be waiting that they fail. You'll be waiting that they face the consequences of what they have done to you. But is it going to solve any problem? Is it going to add joy or bitterness to you by continuing in this path? That's number two. Number three, commit to letting go. It's difficult to accomplish anything without having the intention of doing so. Most people don't mirac mirac miraculously lose 25 pounds or start saving an extra of 100 pounds every month. Anything positive normally starts with an intention. So commit to finding a way to forgive and move on. Here we are on this platform of IIU, and we are sharing. We can share all to you within one hour, but you can seek for help. You can contact me personally, or you can even contact the team behind IIU, and they'll be able to give you more information, and they'll be able to give you more in, in solutions so that you'll be able to free yourself. But the first thing first, commit to letting go. Are you ready? On this platform, I've got so many people, but I'm asking the same question, are you ready? Are you ready to let go? Are you ready to forgive? The fact that you've written your list down, you have seen the way, sorry, you have seen the way you have, and straining. And you have seen the cons and pros and the advantages and disadvantages of it. The question is, are you ready to let go? And if you are ready, that's the first step. The second step is, are you ready to commit to it? Because it's a process. It's a journey. It's the steps that you have to take for you to let go. It's not enough to say, I forgive you. There are so actions. There are so many things you have to take into actions for you to really forgive that person. So it's a commitment. You have to dedicate yourself to it, to forgive. You have to be committed to your action to forgive. So are you ready? You have to take some steps. Some steps is very difficult to take, but you have to take it. Remember, the Bible even says that pray for those who hurt you. Pray for your enemies. Say, it's also say love yourself, love your neighbor, and even love your enemies. Are you ready to go to that path? Go through that path. Are you ready? And if you are ready, you have to show intention now. So as you are listening to me now, I believe your mindset is being renewing, is renewing. I believe that you are gaining the more information about how you can forgive, how it is possible to forgive, how it is possible to walk away and let go and free yourself and be happy. So when said you leave this place today, start thinking, it's the part of it. Start meditating, start reading some other things, start asking questions. Like when I finish my series today, if you have so many questions, type it on the chat or send it to me. That is the way to go. So you have to start with an intention that you really want to forgive and you really want to free yourself. Commit to finding ways to forgive. So take actions after this seminar. We only have few, one hour or so, one and a half hours to go through this. So we can't really break it down. But I want you to start a start afresh. Start a step. Make a step today to make an intention to want to forgive. Okay. Then number four, you have a choice. You can decide to stay where you are or decide to move on. 
You can decide to come out of your comfort zone. You can decide to be, want to be happy. Remember, even the wealth, no matter how rich you are, how wealthy you are, you cannot use it to buy your happiness. It cannot replace wealth with happiness. And happiness will lead you to have a good health. And you still can't buy health because health stands on its own. And health is wealth. So it's your choice. Remember this, we are intelligent. We are taught food creators. We don't have to simply react to things like lower animals. We are above them. We are human beings created in the image of God. You do have a choice about how you interpret things and actions you take afterwards. You can also change your mind and choose something different after your initial reaction. So you have the right to choose. You have the ability to choose what you want for your life. Remember the scripture says, is either you choose life, not death. So which one do you want in your own life? Happiness or sorrowful? Bitterness or joyful? What do you want for your life? For the rest of your life? So you have a choice. So you can forgive and free yourself and enjoy the rest of your life. Time is too short. Then number five, be empathetic. It's easy to just assume that the other person is just a bad person. Or maybe there is more to it than that. We are all created by God. We all have our issues. We are not perfect. We are human beings. My own strength can be your own weakness. And your weakness can be my own strength. So we work together to grow ourselves. No one is perfect. Like I said before, it might not be intentional. And like I said before, it might be the situation the person found himself that makes the person to behave the way he behaves to you. Or maybe that action, even though it's a very terrible action, might be a cry out. It could be crying for help. I'm not saying it should be like their mama and accept all whatever they did to you. But we just have to be empathetic sometimes and see and assess the situation. Sometimes it might even be we contributed to the, to the problem. Oh, yes. Because sometimes we look on the other side and blame them. Maybe it's in the world, maybe it's 50-50. Maybe you contributed to it and you need to also assess your own life too because you might be the one provoking the order or something else just coming. And that is why assessing the situation is very important. But you can only do that when you also be empathetic. Try to see things from their own perspective, you might be surprised what you find. Then number six, consider your part in it. Do you contribute to the issue in some ways? It's rare that anyone is 100% innocent. It's rare. It's rare. Go and look at it. When a disagreement occurs, realize your part in the matter can help you understand their motivation of doing what they did. It's important to find forgiveness for yourself, as well as if you regret anything that you did or you said. Let's assess the situation and let's admit if we realize that we are also at fault and let's see the way to move forward and seek for help. Seek for support. The same thing if you do it yourself, you can also help others to do the same thing. They just want to see who we 
be the lead. And I want to believe that every one of us standing here or listening, relaxing, listening to me, because you've come here to learn from us, you will be the lead and look at the things in a different ways. Remember, yes, you can overcome. So let me just quickly round up with the two other points. Focus on the here and now. Tomorrow we take care of itself. Here and now. Constantly relieving the past just keeps the hurts, feelings, chumney. One of the keys to live is to be in the presence. Be in the presence is about now, not about the past. Because if you rely, put all your life on the past, it will hold you back and limit you. Live for the now. And you can change things now. You can start all over again now. You can start a new chapter now. You can choose whatever you want to choose to, to progress now. If you want to see the future, start developing. And it is not too late to start. Then the fana, move on. Forgive the person and you immediately feel better. Please try this. After this section today, look for somebody that has hurt you and start the process. I can guarantee you before the end of this week, it's just a little feelings you will have that will make you better. We are at our best when we are at with compassion, when we feel great too, when compassion and forgiveness are automatically part of our lives. Forgiveness is something that you largely do for yourself. And if you want to be free, forgive yourself, forgive others, and learn to rise up above every situation and be yourself, be the best of you, and impact into other people's life. So as I round up now, let's focus on the positive. Dr. Terry Obers has been conducting a long-term study since 1986 on what makes pop couple happy, strengthening relationship. She advises that couples resolve to focus on the positive. She explains that happy couples focus on what is going well in their relationship rather than focusing on what is going wrong? That might be a tips of for you. Then another one, allow yourself to be vulnerable. Don't say you know it all. Don't put yourself in a position of showing other people that you are perfect. Brent Brown, author of Diary Greatly, How the Courage to be Vulnerable Transformed the Way We Live. We live love, parents, and needs. Explain that vulnerability holds the key to emotional intimacy. Oh yes, that is why you see some of us share stories so that you will know that we've been there. You are not alone. It's not new and it is not strange. The only difference is, is that we seek for help or we sought for help and then we gain those principles, and we acted on it. That makes it better for our lives. She also had it that vulnerability is about being honest with how we feel about our fears, about what we need, and asking for what we need. It's allowing ourselves to be truly seen by our partner, what and all. So, May I advise you to keep building yourself up in the areas of relationship and learn more skills that will help you to
to free yourself completely from unforgiveness and be happy forever and ever. Is it possible? Oh, yes. All things are possible with God. And yes, you can. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this topic because it's so passion for me as well to be able to share with you. I don't know it all. I'm also learning with you. So take action after this because wisdom is the principal thing. And in all our gettings, we get understanding, says from the scriptures. So as you have learned this information, I believe you've understand it. And if you still want questions, if you have questions to ask, feel free to ask. And then take action. It's about you. And it's about your happiness and your good health. So be willing to forgive yourself and forgive others. Thank you so much. I want to seize this opportunity to express my gratitude to Sir Piyush Pandit, the founder of IIU, International Intensive University. You can learn what I've learned here or you, what I've shared here, you can get it from your classroom. And that is how unique this university is all about. It's about building yourself to make yourself happy and free and live a good life and live a legacy for people to see and learn from you. If you are happy, everyone around you will be happy because you are the connector. So, sir, pay your spending. Thank you so much, sir, for this opportunity to learn and to learn and to share. And I want to say thank you to all our great, great leaders, the team behind this IRU. Thank you. Professor Nada, thank you for staying by. Thank you, my professor Charles. Thank you, Dr. Inga, Dr. Sanga, and Dr. Emina. I Dr. love you Snickta, all. Dr. Snickta. Dr. Snickta. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. I really love you all. I appreciate you all. And I believe that we are all learning every day transforming our lives and renew, renewing our mindset. So thank you.